Hi, my name's Alistair and I'm the freshwater ecologist with the Bay of Plenty Regional Council. My job as a freshwater ecologist is to study life in the rivers and streams throughout the region. When most people think of life in our rivers and streams, they think of birds or fish, but these animals are often the biggest and most noticeable. However, there is also another large group of animals which mostly go unnoticed. These are, of course, the invertebrates. In this video, I wish to explain what invertebrates are, what their roles in aquatic ecosystems are, and how we can use them to monitor stream health. So firstly, what are the invertebrates? They are basically small animals without backbones. They include aquatic insects such as browsing mayflies, which consume algae growing on stones. They also include caddisflies, which are well known for building small cases out of sticks and stones, which they carry around them as a form of shelter or protection. Other invertebrates include snails, which are also very common in slow flowing streams where algae or slime growth is common. Invertebrates are important because they consume algae and decaying organic matter in streams. There are also predatory invertebrates which consume other invertebrates. However, all these invertebrates are consumed by either fish or by birds. So basically, without invertebrates, there would be no fish or birds in our waterways. Aquatic invertebrates are thus very important in our rivers and streams throughout the region. Invertebrates are also used worldwide by ecologists such as myself to assess the health of our waterways. This is because different invertebrates can tolerate different environmental conditions. For example, mayflies are usually only found in fast flowing streams with relatively cool water, large substrates and not much algae. They become much less common in streams with warm water, small substrates and more algae. Snails, however, have almost the complete opposite habitat requirements and are usually most commonly found in slow flowing streams dominated by fine sandy substrates with lots of algal growth in them. These different habitat requirements allow us to assess the overall health of a stream as the absence of particular invertebrates from a site can tell us a lot of really important information. An example of how invertebrate communities change with differing habitat quality and water quality can be found in the Wainuita Fara. The stream commences up in the headwaters through native bush and flows down through urban areas. Three sites were investigated, an upper site surrounded in native bush, a middle site at the beginning of the urban part of Whakatane and a lower site deep in the urban area. So by examining the invertebrate communities in each of these three sites, we can see how stream health changes down the stream. The first site in the Wainui Tafara flows through native bush. The stream bed is quite coarse with lots of large cobbles and boulders, and there is a lot of shade provided by native bush and overhanging ferns and sedges. And these are the invertebrates found in the upper site. In the centre is a large insect called a toe biter, and just up here is one of the filter feeding black flies. And over here we have a scurrying around a number of mayflies, either Deleotidium or Zephlebia. And another mayfly over here, possibly a Rallodens. And this is a filter feeding caddisfly, Aetia psyche, who's obviously very excited to be in this video. Now all these animals, the mayflies and the toe biters, are indicative of high water quality and a stream in good ecological condition. The second site of the Wainui Tufara is at Valley Road. Here the stream is much more open and the banks are covered only with long grass. Flows are still quite fast and the stream bed is still dominated by boulders and large gravels. Unlike the upper site, the stream here receives stormwater inputs. When it rains, rain runs off our roads and our car parks, down the gutters and into the reticulated stormwater system. This water contains a lot of contaminants such as oil and petrol which drips from cars, as well as heavy metals that come from our tyres and our brake pads. All this ends up in our streams, thus lowering the water quality. So the invertebrates at this site are quite different. We have lots of midge larvae, and ostracods, which is a type of crustacean. The dominant invertebrates are these snails, Podinopergus, but we still see our friend Aetia psyche here. 
as well as some other caddisflies, Pycnocentrodes over here. So although we have the sensitive caddisflies such as Pycnocentrodes and Aetia psyche, the fauna is becoming more dominated by snails and midges. And this reflects the slightly lower water quality and changed habitat conditions at this middle site. This is the lowermost site of the Wainuiti Fara at King Street. The stream here is just as open as the middle site, but the flows are much slower and the stream bed dominated by fine sands and small gravels. There is also lots of vegetation along both sides of the channel and this provides the only habitat for the invertebrates, so not much habitat quality at this site. The invertebrate communities at this lower site are also very different. Here we have animals such as this damselfly, which are very common in slow flowing environments, as well as lots of snails, which are the dominant animal here. We also have some beetle larvae, as well as the ubiquitous midges. All these animals are very different to those we found up in the uppermost site, where we had lots of mayflies. Mayflies are totally absent at this lowermost site, reflecting the slower flows and the fine substrate. So by looking at these three sites down the Wainui to Fara, we can clearly see the value of using invertebrates to monitor stream health. We see the loss of these sensitive insects like mayflies and stoneflies as you move from the upper site down to the lower site. And these animals are replaced by more tolerant animals like snails, midges and dragonflies and damselflies. So because the invertebrates are responding to the overall changes in stream health, we can then use them throughout the region to assess changes in stream health. And then from this we can look at the overall state of our rivers and also any trends in how river health changes over time.